Good morning. So I will repeat some of the uh, recommendations that Dick just gave you, but um, I will go more in, into details. So my first presentation, I have two presentations actually. First, I will give you some uh, important tips for the preparation of the CDI uh, metadata and data files. Then I will go into the details of Octopus software and uh, presenting the new, the new de developments. And also then we will follow with the hands-on exercise that I have not prepared, but I've asked people to uh, bring their own CData net data. And I would like you to, to, to run Octopus on your data to see if you have mistake or not, and uh, we will go around. We have three of us there to, to try to understand why you have mistakes, if you have any. So first of all, I will uh, start with the preparation of the CDI metadata and, uh, and the data files. Last year at the training course, I already had a, a presentation on more or less the same subjects. It was how to improve the workflow using the CData net tools. And in this presentation, I explained the, the, the role of each tool in details. I details also um, the format uh, CDataNet ODV. And uh, I gave recommendation on, on the CDataNet ODV files. And uh, uh, there is a lot of description of uh, errors and how to avoid the errors in this presentation. And this presentation is all still available. And uh, following this link, you will manage to, to see it again for the people who were not there last year. So in this presentation this year, I will recall the, 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 ma the main objectives, uh, objectives of the tools. I will give um, some example of data flow using the tools. And I will give you some important key messages. So. It's a challenge, as you know, for data infrastructure to distribute homogeneous data and metadata files so that people using the data uh, can uh, uh, use them with standard tools, tools. That's the reason of why of the development of the tools that we provide in CDataNet, which are Nemo, Octopus, and Mikado. Nemo first tool is to convert ASCII file to CDataNet format which are ODV, MedAtlas, and NetCDF. So you, this is used to convert a file received from the sensors or from the laboratories, mean, I mean CTD files, XBT files, which are in ASCII format, and you want to convert them to a CDataNet format, you have to use Nemo. And at the same time, Nemo is able to generate the corresponding uh, coupling table and also to generate uh, what we call a CSV summary file, which can be used by Mikado to generate the corresponding metadata XML files. Second tool is Octopus. Octopus is used to check the format, to split the, the files, um, the multi-station files into monostation files is need, is if needed and to convert from one CDataNet format to another one. So for example, from MedAtlas, we can convert to MedAtlas, to ODV and to NetCDF. From ODV, we can convert to ODV and NetCDF, and so on. And finally, Mikado is used to generalize the standard metadata XML descriptions of the, for the CDataNet catalogs. And Mikado can be connected to a database and run in, uh, in automatic mode to generate all the descriptions uh, uh, that you have in your database. Or it can be used manually if you don't have a, a database, for example, to generate one XML at, one, uh, at once. So, Normally, for the data, it's better to use it automatically because uh, if you have to describe the CDI manually, it can take some, some time if you have many CDIs. But for the CSR or the admit description, if you don't have a, a, a database, it's easy to input the data directly in Mikado, manually, I mean, and generate the XML, the corresponding XML. So I will give you some example of 
data flows from the data that you receive in your data center to uh, CDataNet uh, catalogs. For example, you can receive files at ASCII format, whatever it is, and use Nemo to convert them to file at CDataNet format with no QC at the beginning. Then you can QC the file with your own tool or with ODV, Ocean Data View, and you, at the end you will have CDataNet format with valid QC flags. On these files you can run Octopus to check that they are correct. And uh, if you have a local database where the metadata is stored, you can generate the XML file using Mikado. This is one example of, of, of flow. And of course, at the same time, you are able to generate the cooking table from Nemo, or it may be stored in your local database. It depends on the way you, you have organized the, the data flow. This is one example. The second example is for people uh, who manage the metadata and the data in a database, for example. So they receive the files from sensors or from laboratories. They ingest them in their local database by their own software. And they uh, run the QC on the database itself. And then using Mikado, only Mikado in that case, they are able to generate the XML files for the CDI catalogs. Uh, from the uh, metadata and data which are stored in the database. This is the modus 2 in the coupling table, if you, if you know that. <coughs> and finally, another example, without any database, you only have the data in the file system. So you, you, you receive your file from the sensors or the laboratories at any ASCII format. You convert them to CDataNet format using Nemo, and then you can check the format using Octopus. And Nemo is able to generate a coupling table and also the CDI summary file to be able to generate the XML description using Mikado. So that's a, flow, a data flow without any interaction with the database. And at the end, of course, uh, you will manage to send your data files in the UData cloud and the XML description in the CDI central catalog at Maris. So now I, will try, I would like to deliver you some important message concerning the, the data files and the metadata descriptions. So Kim, the first message concerns the granularity of the data, which is very important. As you see, as you know, in CDataNet, we can have vertical profile, we can have time series, we can have trajectories. And uh, the, gran the granularity, the ideal granularity for vertical profiles is one CDI for one CTD cast, for example, with all the, par the measured parameters. So if, if you have uh, one CTD measuring temperature, salinity, oxygen, and fluorescence, let's say, you, you will have one CDI for these four vertical profiles, not one CDI per vertical profile. Same for the bottle cost, one CDI for all the measurements. Or you can have one CDI for one sediment core or for one sediment grab, for example. Then you have the trajectories, which are measured underway. And there we have one CDI for one trajectory. For example, it, it can be one CDI for one thermo thermosalinograph cruise. And uh, with measurement of temperature and salinity, only one CDI for all the crews. Or for the seismic uh, data, you can have one CDI for one seismic segment or for one seismic cruise, depending how you manage the, the data in your uh, data center. Same for the bathymetric data. We, you can have one CDI for one full cruise or for one track of the cruise. And finally, we have the time series. And there we recommend to have one CDI for one location and one depth, repeating in time. 
can be a monitoring station or that can be also one current meter time series, one wave series, one physical chemical monitoring station, one biological monit monitoring station, uh, one contaminant monitoring station in biota, in sediment or in water. So for each of these time series, only one CDI. And the, the recommendation is if you have new measurement for the same point of the same location at the same depth, then do not create a new CDI, update the previous one with the, the additional data. Because we can see that in the, in the data set, which is actually in CDATANET, we have sometimes um, a large fam fragmentations of some time series. For example, on this example, we, you have 12 locations and 12 deaths, and you have 1,500 more than 1,500 time series. And on the red points, so one location, one depth, you have more than 300 CDIs. So we would like to only have one, or if it's very big time series, very, very, uh, I mean, if you make measurement every 10 seconds, maybe it's too big to have only one, but try not to have 300, try to have to, 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 to aggregate the data per year or per, per something, per decade, uh, in order to... And there is an, uh, another example where on the red points that you have on the map, you have more than 600 CDIs for one point. So the recommendation of our, of our colleagues who manage the World Package 11 and we who, who are doing the products the aggregated data set and the, the climatology, is that it's very difficult to manage this kind of data. So they would like a reprocessing of the data at the data center level to aggregate the time series belonging to the same position uh, in the same, re, uh, the same moving station. So that's um, my key message on granularity. And this is an example of, of a time series, which lasts from 1974 to 2006. And uh, if we received new data, I mean, from 2006 to nowadays, for example, we will not create a new CDI. We will update this one and aggregate the additional data in the data file. Then the second uh, important message that I want to deliver is the coherency between the metadata and the data. You, you know that the metadata and the data files are sent separately. The metadata are sent to Maris for the, for the CDI catalog, whereas the data are sent um, uh, to, to the, will be sent now to the UDAT cloud. So it is very important that the metadata and the data are coherent. What you de describe in the metadata is what you have in your data file. And your metadata is the description of one local CDI ID, not of all the local CDI ID of the cruise, for example. So the, must, the metadata descriptions must be adapted to this local CDI ID. Uh, and uh, for example, only the measure, the parameters which are measured in this local CDI ID, in this CTD cast, for example, has, have to be described in the corresponding metadata file. And this is an example, a simple one, of course, I took a simple one, where you have um, one cruise with several bottle stations. Station one, you have measurement on temperature, salinity, nitrate plus nitrate and oxygen. Station two, you don't have the nitrate and nitrate. And station three is the same as station one in terms of measurements. So in the corresponding CDIs, station one, P02, you must only have temperature salinity. And there I made a mistake. It's not NTRA, it should be NTRA Z because it's nitrate plus nitrate and oxygen. For the station two, you don't have the enter Z parameters. And for st station three, you have it again. So in the metadata, you have only the P02 param parameters corresponding to what you have actually in your data file. Uh, 
And this is very important because we know that we have a lot of metadata files. We, uh, we say that in this file you will find nitrate and nitrate, and, but actually there is only temperature and salinity. Um, this is the third key message I want to deliver, and or, Dick already did the same. So, put as many metadata as possible in the CDI, and not only the mandatory information. So, it is, it's important for uh, the fairness of the data. So, you have to link, if possible, to the EdMed catalog, to the EdMERP catalog, to the CSR catalog, using the EdMERP, EdMERP and CSR references. And this has been uh, shown last year in the presentation uh, on Mikado, how to link to this catalog using Mikado. Um, also, if you have a GML track for the cruise, it's better to send it instead of sending an area, for example. And uh, uh, additional information such, such as documentation on the analysis methods used and so on is very important, DOI, whatever. All, all you have uh, is important. And the, first, uh, the fourth message is uh, the same, but for data. Give as many information as possible using Nemo, for example, in your data file. Use the SDN reference for external link to CSR, CDI, platform list, etc. Keep information about the instrument. And you have a special tag in the SDN mapping lines that you can use to keep the information about the instrument. If you, have, if you are dealing with XBT data, keep the full rate equation that you can also um, add in the SDN mapping lines. And this one that uh, already was uh, underlined by Dick, once you have generated your SDN file, please, before sending them to the central system, check them with Octopus. And if you have a mistake, correct the mistake before sending the file to... to uh, and you, you will check the format structure, you will check the co coherency of the file. For example, if you have flag 9, you should not have a measurement in, top, in front of the flag 9, and vice versa. If you have no measurement, you should have a flag 9. And uh, we check also the vocabs. If you use deprecated terms, we are able to replace them by the new terms. Uh, we detect wrong terms, etc. And as Dick said, we have many, many quality checks on the files, more than several hundreds of checks. So it's important that you check your files with Octopus. And, and it's more, it's important if you, even if you use Nemo to generate the file, you, you have to check them before sending them to to the central catalog. And um, if you don't use uh, the software to generate, generate the file, it's more important to, to, even more important to use Octopus to check your file. And finally, of course, my last message is the advantage or the advantages about using the, st the, the, the files is that you're sure to be standard. You avoid a lot of errors. If the standard is, is, has to be upgraded, then it will be taken into account without any change on your site. And in that case, you will have no incoherency between the data files, the XML description, and the coupling table. So as much as possible, use our tools. And do not forget that there are a lot of documentation online. And here I've put some li links to the description of the data transport format. Uh, we, you have also have user manual for the generation of the CDI metadata. And uh, we have, you have the, the two responsive help desks, which are the CData Net help desk and the CDI support of the help desk. Do not hesitate to send email when you are stuck somewhere. Uh, we, are, we are responsive. You will get, get, get a, an answer normally during the, the day. And if it's more complicated, it can take a little bit more. But normally, you will have a, a first uh, answer as soon as we receive the question. 
And that's it for my first presentation. I don't know if you have any questions concerning that. Yes? Or I can hear you, I will repeat your question maybe. So in that case, you have to delete. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the question was um, what to do with uh, time series for which we have the, the, the data center already have a lot of CDI for the same location, and the, they are already in the CDI catalog. So in that case, you have to delete to ask for a deletion to CDI support, and you send a new update, a new uh, CDI to, to them. Um, the question is about which CSR to put for description of FCDI in, in case of monitoring station. If it's a monitoring station, it's, I think it's described in the EDIOS catalog, not in the CSR catalog. So in, so in that case, you don't put a reference to CSR, but you can put a reference to the EDIOS catalog at the, at the, uh, in, the, in, the local, in the CDI description. Yeah. So you you are asking if there will be a CSR Ah, you you already can uh, use uh, the geo network for the C CSR of harvesting. For example, uh, we in Ifremer, we every week uh, our, our new uh, or updated CSR are automatically harvested by BSH. So you can have this kind of system, but. Uh, nowadays, uh, the C CSR catalog is going to be transferred from BSH to Ifremer. So we will develop a new system. So uh, we, 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 we don't know yet exactly. We will have the same functionality at minimum, but maybe you could, we, could, we could implement some others. We still have to think about it. I, I have the same remark of being stepping on the shoulders of the we have, we, have to, we have to watch out for the deletion of CDIs. Yeah, it's but it's really a last rescue. Uh, so because CDIs can be taken up in data products already. So even if you have uh, submitted them before, they can be referred to in data products like in the minus product or the benefit or whatever. So if you delete them, then the provenance is lost for those files. So Normally, if you would, I think your, your point was to, that you have monthly files and you want to replace them at the end of the year with a yearly file or something. Yeah, like one, one big slide, so yeah but don't, don't make them too big. <laughs> That's another but, question because I have yeah. everything in database, so I don't care about the time, but if you need to download it. Yeah, but monthly files are okay. 
No, not so much, not 600 from one location. I'm not, I don't agree with, uh, with you, uh, Peter. Because for the product uh, calculation, it's not easy to, to have this kind of... Um, and they complain about that. They don't want to have 600 files for one location. Okay, but deletion is also not huh? Deletion is also not Yeah, but deletion is not a real deletion on your side. Because we do that already for all the, the Argo data files. Yeah, so I think it's it's we we have to discuss about that. We can then rather delay a little bit more and then have a massing CDI that will be precise. Okay. That is no problem. Yeah, yeah, but if the if the data changes, that's not an update. So what he wants to do is merge. That's not an update. That's the initial thing. After the merge, we we need to update CDIs every month. Yeah, I understand that that is the, the preferred way, but we, well, we have to think of yeah, a yeah, better yeah. solution because the deletion is a, well, for the problem that's in the products, it's not good. But because at the moment, the, at the, the moment, at the moment, they don't use this time series in the product because no. uh, they are useless for them. Okay, good. So. so we, will, we will at least also think of, uh, because in the new system we have versions, so the versions all versions mm. will also be kept. Even if they move, they will still be kept. Yeah. But we, uh, we have to discuss internally what is the best of We'll come back to that. I will prepare the new for new data and for previous one, I will wait for. Uh, yeah. So I will move to my second presentation, which is more detailed about the Octopus software. And I will uh, remind you uh, all the functions of Octopus. I will give you some details on the last release of Octopus and about the new developments. And I will detail, present, uh, make a presentation of the functions. So Octopus main functions are to Octopus is a checker and a converter, and it works only on C data net format files. So you can have a set of files as input of Octopus, and you can check them, and you can also convert them into uh, another C data net format or the same C data net format because Octopus is able to correct some errors on the flies. Um, Octopus is able to split a, mil a multi-station file into mono-station files of the same format or of another format. Octopus is able to extract some stations from a multi-station file. And you can extract, for example, two CDIs from a, 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 a file which has 100 of CDIs. And you can extract that at the same format or at another format, C data net format. And also we have an ad additional function specific for the MGD files. MGD stands for magnetism, magnetism gravity, and depth. And uh, Octopus is able to convert MGD version 81 and version 98 files to MGD uh, CDataNet ODV files. This was developed in the frame on the Emonet bathymetry projects and even former uh, GeoCIS project, I, I think. Um, and of, and uh, Octopus has also additional fun functions because, for example, while converting, Octopus is able to generate the coupling table that can be used by CDataNet on demand. And at the moment uh, when he will convert a file, it will generate the coupling table for each local CDI ID that are described in the files. So we had several releases uh, of Octopus since the beginning of the project. Uh, last year, uh, for the training course, course we had the 1.4.0 version, which was delivered in March. And since then, we have uh, delivered the version 
1.4-port wine in June last year, just after the training course, because we discovered there uh, some bugs that we have corrected, and we also added uh, uh, additional functions, which was the ability to check and convert the files generated from MGD77. And uh, also, we were able to detect uh, that biological format was a biological format instead of rejecting the file we say okay it's it's a biological format but we are not dealing with it now but so we skip the file and we go to the next one before that when we found a bi biological file we stop and say it's a mistake there so and uh, in march this year we will we release another version which was the 1.4.2 and uh, the most important uh, uh, add-on was the compliance with uh, Java 9 and 10 uh, and some other, I will not go into the detail of these uh, uh, new functions, but you can read them in the presentation. And uh, also we added a JSON log, which is important to be uh, uh, used by uh, software and this was very important for Maris who, who is using Octopus on uh, all the data files in the system to be able to, to read uh, the, the JSON log and to interact with, uh, with it. And now we just will leave a, a, a new version if just before this training course. And uh, this is a major release because Octopus is now able to check and, and convert uh, uh, and uh, to check the ODV variant formats that have been uh, developed for biology, microliter, and flow cytometry. The conversion is only possible from ODV to ODV, not to from ODV to NetCDF, because we are not sure that biological data, microliter, and flow cytometry are, are needed at uh, NetCDF format. We are not sure that we have users for that. If it's needed, we will we can develop it. But at the moment, we can only convert from ODV to ODV, and this is used to add the additional uh, SDN reference for CDI, if it's missing, for example, to check the vocabs and to replace uh, uh, deprecated terms and to delete also the empty columns that you may have in your, your files. If you convert them from ODV to ODV, then you will de delete the extra columns. So these are all the formats, the conversions that are possible and the one we have added in the last version is for ODV variants that you can convert from ODV to ODV. Uh, Octopus has a user manual which is embedded in the software by clicking on the help button, but it's also available online on CDATANET website and Octopus have a FAQ pages that I recommend to, to have a look if you before sending the question to the then user desk, you may have the answer on the FAQ page. And you also have their presentation of Octopus. So for the new development that have been done for this 1.5.0.6 actually version, we are able to detect the variance ODV formats and for biology, for flash cytometry and for microliter. And how do we detect this, this format is explained on, th on this slide. It depends on the parameters that you have in the file. For example, for biology, if we find mean distance and max distance and uh, the, the, the scientific name of the species or uh, the, the ID of the species, then we will know that it's a biological uh, data file and so on. For flow cytometry, check, we check other parameters and for microliter, uh, and uh, other ones also. And if you don't respect this, the file can be a valid CDATANET file, but it will not be considered as a biology or flow cytometry or microliter file. So we have implemented uh, some new checks for this format, 28 new checks for biology, 17 for flow cytometry, and 28 for microliter. And for all this format, we check the presence of the mandatory columns. And if they are not there, we will, we will uh, send an error. 
we check the label of the mandatory column and the unique of the the unit of the mandatory column. If it's different, we will only send a warning. But it's good to know that you have not ex exactly respected the the format. And we check the co co coherency be between C data net mapping units and the column header. And if it's not coherent for the mandatory column, we will send you an error. So we have checked some files just to, to make uh, to see what's in the data net uh, database and we found a lot of errors. For example, there are 69 fi files of low cytometry in the system. Only nine are correct. 60 have the same mistake, which is an extra tabulation, uh, which in, in due, in, uh, results in a shift in the columns. So the, the files are, are not cannot go through the octopus checks. We checked also 85, 84 files uh, for microliter downloaded from the CDATANET website and only 20 files were correct. The, the errors that we found is, uh, for example, a bad mapping of the sub sample ID or a mapping to H03 uh, list with, instead of P01 in the, map, in the mapping line. And uh, uh, others do not respect the microliter standard. The first measured parameter was death in, instead of minimal observation deaths. The net opening was mapped to this parameter instead of the one recommended in the format. And we, still, we, we also check 5,000 biological files and only 1,800 were correct. So only one third of the data, two thirds had mistakes. And the mistakes that I found are listed and you have the ADMO code. So if you recognize your ADMO code, you know that you will have corrections to do. For example, we, we found uh, the same P0 term for two different parameters. And that this was a mistake because uh, one is, is a, a mass parameter, the other one is a concentration. So the same code could, could not be used for, the, for this parameter. We had an, a bad, uh, bad P0 value on uh, more than 1,400 files. We had flag inconsistency flag 9 with non-empty colon or empty colon with flag different of from 9. Uh, and we have unit inconsistencies uh, for number of files. So please check if your data center is there. It means that you have correction to do. Okay, so that was uh, what I wanted to do the, uh, to tell you on the new version of uh, the software. Now, I will just give you uh, some details uh, on the use of Octopus and then after that, before the coffee break, I would like you to check your files using Octopus. So you can convert only one file or check only one file or one folder. It's up to you to, cho to choose a file or, or a folder with Octopus. And if you check the format, the input format is automatically detected. Either it's a Metadlas, ODV, or NetCDF, or bio variant format. You can, if the format is okay, you will receive a green message. If the format has problems, you will receive orange message for warnings, red message for uh, an error. If there are only, only warnings, the files can be Converted, but it's it's recommended to check what is the warning about. If you have a red message, you will not be able to convert the file, and it has to be corrected. In this example, I introduced uh, an error on the P01 parameter code, and so it's detected by Octopus. You can use, as I said before, uh, Octopus to split your uh, File to from multi station to mono station, and you, you can see that there is a by default it, the split is not activated. You have to click on yes, and then you will split the files in mono station files. And 
you can export, of course, to the output format. <coughs> and finally, you can extract CDI from the input file. By clicking on the Show CDI button there, you will have all the CDIs of, of, on your, in your files, and you will be able to select, in, in this case, I selected only two CDIs that I need to extract from the file, and I will generate a file with only the two CDIs as output file. Uh, if you have very old version of the vocab P011 and P061 instead of P01 and P06, uh, Octopus is able to, 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 to correct that in your files. Octopus can be used in batch mode only for checking and uh, also for conversion. And if you use it in batch mode, you can generate, a G you will have a JSON log that can be uh, read by programs. Only in the JSON log file is generated only if you use ODV in batch mode. Uh, not ODV, sorry, Octopus. Okay, that's it for Octopus. And I have two more slides. Uh, to announce you the, the, the next version of Nemo software, which will, the actual version was delivered in January this year with the list of these new functions that you can see on the slide. I'm not going to go too much into the detail. But what I want to announce is a new uh, version which is planned before the next plenary meeting of CDATANET, that is in October this year. And this uh, new version will be able to generate ODV variant format for biology, microliter, and flow cytometry. We, you will be also uh, uh, the possibility to update the vocab list in patch mode, which is not possible yet. Um, we will be able to read CSV metadata. Meta meta At the moment, we only read the CSV data, not the metadata. And we will accept two identical P0 codes uh, in the parameter list of the data tab, which is not possible at the moment. And this will be done, for example, for people measuring, I don't know, on the CTD, they put two CTD sensors, and they want to keep the two, tem two temperature sensors, and they want to keep the two temperatures in the file. At the moment, it's not possible. We will allow that. And we will provide a version for a Mac without installer. And I think that's it for my presentation. I'm ready to answer to your questions, if you have any. And then let's move to the hands-on session on your files. Run Octopus, find error, and we will help you to, to understand why you have errors, if any. Do you have questions?